This is a 2012 iMac. It's sleek, beautiful, and impossibly slim. And a certain Tim Cook wants you to think that it's totally obsolete. Well, not around here it's not. That's why today we're gonna max this thing out, install a bleeding edge Linux distro on it, and give a beefy middle finger to planned obsolescence. So stay tuned. And if you believe that technology should last a heck of a lot longer than the manufacturers suggest, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. This is a 21.5 inch late 2012 iMac. It was the first iMac to use Apple's new impossibly slim case design. Here it is next to its super chonky predecessor. And everything about this iMac is wonderful. It has a bright, vibrant 21.5 inch IPS display. It's packing an Ivy Bridge quad core i5, and it could be configured up to 16 gigs of RAM. And these things can be had for dirt cheap these days. I found this one on Facebook Marketplace for a hundred bucks. The guy who had this thing upgraded and just wanted it gone. I think that's the story with a lot of these wonderful machines because Apple obsoleted this thing in 2019. That was half a decade ago. But that's okay, we don't need Apple anyway because this machine has plenty of power and plenty of life and we're gonna prove it by running a beautiful bleeding edge Linux distro called KDE Neon. We'll talk about why that distro is so special in a little bit, but first I wanna max this thing out because, well, it's super cheap to do. I got a 16 gig RAM kit on Amazon for 30 bucks. Here's a $30 SSD. Oh, and a $9 re-adhesive kit because, uh, well, this is actually pretty involved surgery. But that's half the fun, right? Right? So the caveat of having such a thin and beautiful design is that we do have a lot of adhesive holding this thing together. Specifically, the screen is held on completely by adhesive and we have to use, well, basically a little pizza cutter to get it off. Fortunately, these kits are super cheap and it comes with a little pizza cutter and new adhesive to put the screen back on. So, <laughs> I've never done this before, so we're gonna do it together. Let's pizza cut this thing open. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick a little cardboard box in here to make sure the screen doesn't, you know, go like this and the glass falls out. So we'll keep it at a minimum angle here. And then I just need to go slow with this pizza cutter between the glass and the aluminum. I think this is probably the most nerve wracking part. Although we do have to take quite a bit of stuff out inside to get to the memory. All right, now that we're inside, we can see that these machines do unfortunately have spinning hard drives. They are very easy to access once the screen is off, just four screws, pop it out, and then pop in your SSD. Unfortunately, the memory is a completely different case on these 21.5 inch iMacs. We literally have to take everything out because the RAM is on the other side of the main board. So hard drive comes out, all these boards come out, and uh, there's quite a lot of screws. It's not difficult, it's just a little bit tedious. Fortunately, iFixit has a detailed guide, which I will link below. So I guess let's speed this up and cue that heavy metal montage. All of that effort to get to these two RAM sockets here. Uh, honestly, it wasn't that bad. A little bit tedious, but everything was easy to unscrew. Not the end of the world. And while I'm in here, I think I'm going to repaste the CPU. I have to go on the other side here. 
because might as well. Yeah, it is quite dry on there, so definitely a good opportunity to do this. We'll just put some nice new Arctic Silver MX-4 on here. That was probably way too much. Okay, so I've got it back together except for the screen. I'm not gonna put the adhesive on yet, of course. We will first just slot the screen back in and make sure I didn't, you know, break anything. All right, moment of truth. Hey, it's alive. Might as well see if it can boot something. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. It booted the KDE Neon installer just fine. I think we can put this thing back together. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. Not only does PCBWay offer high quality PCB prototyping and production, but they also offer things like assembly, 3D printing, injection molding, and tons of fabrication services. Right now, PCBWay is running their KiCad open source design contest. Use KiCad to showcase your creativity and technical skills and submit a project themed around either communication or automation. There are a bunch of neat prizes on offer and a bunch of great submissions in the gallery already in case you need some inspiration. Submission cutoff is June 2nd, 2024, so make sure you check the link down in my description. And as always, if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, this is the perfect time to give PCBWay.com a try. All right, so I'm just going to hopefully peel off the remnants of the original adhesive. This comes off kind of satisfyingly. Look at that. All right, just following the numbers going around the edge here for these strips. Check it out, we now have a fully upgraded, fully functional and beautiful iMac. And I really have to say, this display is beautiful. Let's really stick it to the man now and install KDE Neon, a cutting edge Linux distro that's kind of special. While this installs, let's talk about what KDE Neon is because KDE Neon under the hood is Ubuntu LTS. And what the purpose of KDE Neon is, well, it's a showcase of the K desktop environment. That's what KDE stands for. And it has all of the KDE features, bells, whistles, applications, exactly as the KDE team intends them. No adulterations, no paring down of anything or customizations from distro maintainers. No, this is KDE as KDE intends it. And <laughs> it's beautiful. We'll play around with this once it's finished installing, but okay, good. It does see our SSD 476.94 gigabytes and all of it is going towards KDE. All right, install complete, no fuss. Let's restart. First boot of our new KDE Neon desktop. And I have to say, this looks absolutely gorgeous. KDE is a very old and very interesting Linux desktop environment. I've been using Linux for a long time and my desktop of choice has always been GNOME for its simplicity. KDE, on the other hand, was always the kind of advanced desktop environment with tons of options for customization and configuration. It's still that way today, but I really have to say 
It is beautiful. Obligatory Neo fetch showing that we are running kernel 6.5, plasma 6.0.4. We have our four core Intel i5 at 3.2 gigahertz. That's pretty good. 16 gigs of RAM and an NVIDIA GeForce GT 640M Mac edition, which is going to be running on the open source Nouveau driver, which again, <laughs> seems to be able to handle things pretty well. Now KDE has its own software center called Discover. So let's see what kind of fun stuff we can install to really give this a quick go. Oh, here's Krita, which is a wonderful image editing application. Heck yeah, we're going to install Krita. We have the Steam Launcher in here as a flat pack, which we can go ahead and install. We have a Spotify app. Obligatory audio test on Spotify using my early 2000s emo band. That works. Oh yeah, look at that, Steam loads just fine. And in fact, since we're now running Linux, we can run way more games than we could on Mac OS because Steam on Linux has Proton and Proton can run Windows games often about as well as Windows. Let's see how Krita runs on here. Yeah, looking pretty good. Krita doing Critter things. Highly recommended. A wonderful free and open source image editor application. And once upon a time, I did all of my thumbnails in Krita. And of course, no action retro video is complete without a Minecraft FPS test. This is the latest version of Minecraft 1.20.6. And let's bear in mind that this is not a gaming machine and certainly not a gaming Linux distro. This is entirely open source, no proprietary video drivers at all, which would probably give better performance than Nouveau here, but actually this is looking pretty playable. Yeah, look at this. It's not silky smooth, but it's Minecrafting. We could probably improve it a bit with some optimization here. Yeah, we're in the mid-teens. Yeah, look at that, that's nice and smooth. That's totally fine, A-OK -okay in my book. So I think the main point of today's video is that these late 2012 and up iMacs can represent an incredible value on the used market. There are seriously like 10 listings on my local Facebook marketplace, around $100 or so for similar machines. And I know I love installing Linux on random old computers, but this thing is really usable under Linux. KDE Neon's really neat, but I think I might put Ubuntu on this because that's what I'm used to and it has proprietary drivers easily installable for this video card. And I wanna actually use this thing. I think I wanna use this as part of my vintage Mac development workflow. And maybe also just as a computer, because despite what Apple wants you to believe, that's what this is. A totally usable, modern, and still beautiful computer. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut King Mods, James Fryman, James Lawry, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics and Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.